Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about how I make my sketchbook spreads and this is referring to sketchbook pages that I intend to look nice because I have a mix of pages that don't look nice, that look nice, that have a mix of like bad and good sketches. I like to kind of draw whatever I feel like in the moment and today I wanted to make a pretty nice looking sketchbook spread and I thought it would be cool to talk about my process for making these spreads and what order I use the materials that I have to make these pages. So this kind of refers to the sort of sketching I've been doing lately and what you see in this video. I think I have like different like genres of sketchbook pages but for this particular one the materials you need is some kind of pencil to sketch, something that you can erase that you can fix things with. So I just use graphite, you can also use pencil crayons if you can kind of erase them. Um, something kind of lighter than the other media. You also need some kind of ink or marker, some kind of wet media that you can do more detailed lines. And I use some water-based markers from Ohuhu. They're the double-ended markers with a brush tip and a fine point end on the other side. The first thing I do is I start by sketching out whatever it is I want to sketch with my pencil. I use graphite today because it erases really well, but I honestly don't really erase that much. But if I do need to fix a small thing I can, but I don't labor over the details when I'm doing these sketchbook spreads. I find if I labor over details, I start to make things look stiff. I don't draw as much because I'm focusing too much on the little things and I just want to get in a lot of drawing for the day. So all I'm using is just like a cheap mechanical pencil with like 2B lead. Um, it might also be HB lead. I can't remember if I refilled that one, but lighter lead is probably good if you're going to be adding details on top of the sketchbook spread. The next step is to grab your water-based markers. You can use Crayola markers, you can use any kind of marker you have on hand, you can even use watercolor if you want. Basically anything that you can cover a large area in a short amount of time. And I block in the background of the sketch and kind of carve it out onto the page. And this allows the sketch to stand out, it lets you see the silhouette of what you've drawn, and Sometimes I'll cover up certain areas of the pencil that I don't actually need, some guidelines. Um, don't be too strict with yourself. You can be messy and loose with this. It's just a sketchbook. Um, and then I pick another light color to add shading to the sketch. And I think this is pretty fun to do because it kind of gives the sketch another layer of dimension. Also, I should have mentioned I'm drawing from a reference from Pinterest, those like really long dogs. I actually posted a reel about them that has like 2 million views now, so I've been really inspired to draw those dogs lately because they're just so fun to draw. Um, and usually I look at the reference while I'm doing the initial sketch, but once it comes time to do ink and the background color, I put the reference away and I try to sort of add detail on my own without looking at the reference, just I find it keeps me looser um, because if I'm focusing too much on what the original picture looks like, I'm going to be influenced by it too much and it might end up stiff or I'll be upset that certain areas of it don't look exactly the same. So I like to put it away once it's time to do the actual lines. And the line work itself is very messy, very quick. I just want to add details and correct any possible mistakes I might have made with the underdrawing and just kind of like add wherever your intuition tells you to. Nothing is too strict with this. You just want to have fun with adding lines and texture and contrast and defining shapes where you see fit. And I'm also using, um, I, I dug out a big box of these like markers and pencils and, and ink pens and all sorts of colors that I've collected over the years that I don't really use because they've been in a drawer. So I took them out and I was playing with them on this sketchbook page and what I'm using there is like a chisel tip fine point liner and I actually love that pen. Um, I'll have to see what it's called. Okay, I found it. It's called the Stedler Pigment Liner um, 0.3 to 2.0. Um, yeah, and it's black. It's the chisel tip. I love it. Um, I would highly recommend this if you want some like varied line weight and if you like to use chunkier lines. Um, I'm really feeling the chisel tip right now and I think I have it in sepia as well. So I actually know I don't have it in sepia. Or do I? Okay, I have a sepia one but it's not a chisel tip. It's a regular nib. So I think I collected all of these supplies um, when I used to have a Sketchbox subscription. I'd make videos. 
with their stuff. Um, I built up a lot of random art supplies, so it's really fun to use them up in my sketchbook. Um, I just love grabbing random stuff to add like colors and lines to my sketches. I find like the more I draw in the drawing session, the more loose and like creative and like fun it is. So near the end of the drawing session, I feel like I can draw things really quickly. And near the beginning, it takes a little bit longer for me to warm up for my like hand-eye coordination to sort of get there. Um, but by the second or third drawing, I'm starting to feel really warmed up. So don't be discouraged if at first it's really difficult because eventually you'll get in the groove. I've kind of like sort of done this sketchbook spread method for a while. And I've definitely seen other artists do the whole like, you do a sketch and then you color in the background to make your sketches pop out. And it is sort of a way to make your page look nicer, but I think it's also a useful way to see the silhouette of your drawing because silhouettes can be pretty important in um, compositions. Like the way your figure is shaped can really like work with the rest of the, if you're doing like a full painting, there'll be a background and you want the silhouette of whatever the subject is to have like a readable, form and to have energy to it. So I think there's like an aesthetic reason to color in the backgrounds, but also a technical reason to like help carve out the shape of the thing that you just drew. And these kind of spreads, I usually draw things from references because I am practicing. I want to get better at defining forms and drawing these dogs. Um, the subject of today was dogs. You can basically choose any subject you want and create your page based on that. And experiment with different supplies. You might not want to do ink on top. You might want to do maybe like a darker pencil crayon. I've done that before. Um, I was feeling more of like natural earthy tones, so I stuck with graphite for the underdrawing. And I could honestly leave these drawings as graphite drawings because I really like them that way. You don't even have to color in the background, but I was really feeling like doing a mixed media approach um, at the time of filming, and that was a lot of fun. So I had a lot of fun making this page, and I'm talking as if the video is ending, but it is not. It is far from over. Um, I found when I first started drawing these dogs, I was finding it a little bit difficult because their noses are so long, and I was getting like confused at like the shape of their nose, and their ears were confusing me, but eventually, after drawing so many of them, I started to find a way that worked for me, a way to depict them in a simplified style that suited the way I draw, but you can also tell what it is. And I tried to include near the end some more energetic poses because I tend to do a lot of stationary, like the animal's head, animal sitting, animal sleeping, but it's also good to throw in some like the animal running or jumping or like doing something with energy. And instead of focusing on the details, and making sure you like define the shapes of the animal properly, you can focus on the motion of it instead and try to make it look like it has energy to it instead of just being like a stationary portrait, but there's nothing wrong with that either. I just like to throw in both to make sure I'm sort of getting my practice in for both kinds of drawings. Um, and also portraits can be like Portraits can also have expression to them and energy, but I wasn't like thinking about that consciously while I was drawing these. I definitely think the first drawing I made on this page turned out a little weird, but I come back and fix it at the end because I'm like, oh, this is a video and I need to fix my sketch so that people know it's, uh, people know that I know that it's a little wonky, but honestly, like I would usually just leave it. Um, the one of the dog holding a ball in its mouth, I just made the eyes angled weird and I tried to overcompensate it by like fixing them over and over and I made them too big and like the nose is strange but I tried to redraw it and I had a much easier time drawing the the face the way I wanted it to be than when I first sat down to draw so warming up is a real thing and it's very important now I want to talk about some art goals I have for this year I like to reflect once a year and it kind of like gives me some motivation for projects I want to do and I think it's important, like, if you want to accomplish certain things, it's kind of important to be, like, intentional about them, or it, it, it can also give you, like, short-term motivation to be like, yeah, I'm working towards my goals, but I never, like, force myself to stick to any specific goals. I just like to think about things that have been going well. So I kind of have three main goals that I want to accomplish in 2023 when it comes to my art, and if you have goals as well, I'd love to hear them in the comments and we can see if we have similar goals. 
My first one is to find joy in making art. And I've definitely talked about this topic a lot in the past, and I even made a video this past year saying like art is not my hobby anymore. Because at that time, I think I was feeling a little bit burnt out and a little bit lost with where I wanted to take my art. And I I feel like that in general a lot of the time, but then also sometimes I get these random waves of inspiration where I haven't drawn in a while and then I start to sketch and I'm like, wait, this is really fun. Why don't I do this more often? I need to be sketching more. And I think I just like, I, I hear a lot of other artists who have um, like art businesses like I do say that the things that they draw for their like whenever they draw it has to be something that that will basically like make money I guess like it's hard to draw something for myself and not post it like I feel like sharing my art is part of the process I don't think I make art to share unless I'm actually filming then I'm like literally filming myself making art because I have the intention of posting that. Um, but anything I draw in my sketchbook, I know I'm going to be sharing it online. But I, I kind of don't agree with the video I made a while ago saying that art is not my hobby. I mean, it's definitely not my hobby, but it still feels like a hobby in a way because certain aspects of art can still like give me joy and inspire me. Like, um, I recently bought these new Procreate brushes and I haven't gotten new brushes in a really long time and it's sort of the equivalent of getting new art supplies and then I started to think like I wonder what kind of art I can make with these brushes and like what, how can I like depict texture differently with these brushes and how can I like, like I'm excited to explore each individual brush and see like what it has to offer and how I can like draw things in certain ways and it kind of like ignited like a little like spark and a bit of like inspiration inside of me and I started to think about art again in an exciting way and look forward to doing it and um, get a lot of satisfaction from doing sketchbook pages and I think those moments of making art is when it sort of like feels like the way it's supposed to um, and I do think that can go hand in hand with posting your art because I, I don't feel restricted by the fact that, okay, how do I put this? Um, knowing that I'm going to eventually probably post most of my sketchbook, if not all of it, um, doesn't really interfere with what I make in the sketchbook because I think I'm at a good place with sketching where I don't really care what it looks like, usually, like 80%. 75% of the time I'm just like you know what I'm just gonna draw and if it looks weird it looks weird and that's what a sketchbook is for unless I'm like filming a YouTube video but uh I I'm slowly becoming more and more comfortable with like having messy sketches and I'm trying I've been trying to stand by this for a couple years just like it doesn't matter what your sketchbook looks like but um th this page in particular I actually really like everything that's on it except for the first one but I fixed it anyway because I'm filming um, but what was I trying to say? Yeah, I think it's it's still possible to be excited and inspired to make art, even if it's also still my job. And I feel like maybe that was just the burnout talking when I made that video. I'd have to watch it again to see what the what exact points I made in the video. But I think like when I'm more inspired to draw, I find myself sort of like fantasizing about things that I want to draw and things that I that I really want to try to depict and certain textures and, and mark making I want to experiment with. And I think that part of making art is still a hobby because it's like a go-to positive thought that I think about a lot, like my plants and like crocheting and my fish tanks. Um, even though I monetize a large part of it, it's still like always at the back of my mind and I can think about it and get excited about it. And I think that part of it is still the hobby part. If that makes any sense, I hope that makes some kind of sense. But basically, I've been sort of feeling what that creative spark feels like again. And I'm just really excited to see where it will lead me in 2023. My next goal, I think I've been doing a good job at this, is to sketch often. I'm not going to say I need to draw every day. I need to fill a sketchbook page per day. But I want to think about sketching more and try to integrate it into my routine more. Because I notice if I'm in a bad mood and I fill a sketchbook page, I eventually get into it and it distracts me and 
It just makes me feel accomplished and productive because I just really enjoy the process of sketching and I'm getting excited at the idea of like trying out new techniques in my sketchbook um, and I've noticed like how much of a positive effect sketching can have on my mood because it's a very low pressure meditative thing to do and it also makes me feel like I'm being productive which is heavily tied to my um, sort of overall well-being is making sure I'm doing something and I don't know if that's a good or bad thing like I'm definitely good at resting but resting is sort of like my hobbies and my hobbies are always like somewhat productive um besides that's besides the point sketching itself can really have a positive impact on my mood um in the long run and I want to make sure I sketch more for the sake of my art and for the sake of my mental health I guess but if you're not in a good place then it can be kind of draining to do creative things. So I just want to like do it when I know it will be a good thing for me and to sketch more often because the more often I sketch, I get into the groove of things and it's easier for me to like create things in general, but I also don't want to burn myself out. So I'm going to find that a better sketching balance where I'm drawing a little bit more, but not like forcing it all the time. And I think this will be an achievable goal because I just want to like think about be more thoughtful about how often I'm sketching and try to remember to do it more. Another thing I want to try um, is to make procreate brushes. This is something that I've been pretty interested in but right now I'm kind of into the traditional stuff not gonna lie but uh, I do want to dive into creating my own brush pack for procreate. I just think it'd be really fun to have an entire pack of brushes and textures that I made myself. I might have to get a better scanner for this. I've actually made brushes in the past, but um, most of the time I don't use them and I use ones that other artists have made. And I just think it'd be really cool to have like a gel arts brush pack that people can get if they want, or maybe I'll keep it to myself, not sure. Um, but I want to make a whole video about that, about me making the brushes and show people how to do it because um, I think it can be kind of daunting, but Procreate makes it very easy to make your own brushes. So I thought that would be a fun, like tangible goal because the other two goals are kind of like, um, just try to have fun with art and draw more. Those are like pretty basic goals. Um, I kind of like didn't draw as much as I wanted to this past year. I definitely got a lot done, but I felt like I was sort of dragging my feet a lot with art and not doing things that were that joyful um, some of the time. Or just not doing it nearly enough because once I would get into it, I would be very happy and excited to continue drawing. I, I'm just like rediscovering how fun it is. It's it's not like like I wasn't having fun all this time, but it's like a it feels very like new and and fresh and fun. Um, and I feel like my skills are developing nicely, and I'm very happy with my progress. So I'm basically just really excited for 2023 and all the art I want to make. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing me make the sketchbook spread and my little tips for how to get it to look like this if you like this sort of style. Um, it's just sort of something I naturally started to do. And I would highly recommend using water-based supplies because anything al with alcohol in it or like permanent markers will bleed through your page and nothing I used on here bled through to the other side because um, I like to protect my drawings on the other page. I'm also going to have prints of this available if you want to just get a print of this page available on my store. You can grab that if you want. I got a lot of requests for that, so I thought, hey, I'll offer a little sketchbook print as a little New Year's. The first, um, well, it's actually not the, it, the, the first video of 2023. We can call it that. It's not the first sketchbook page of 2023. I've done a lot of these dogs. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in my next video.